So when I was between the ages of five and eight years old, the Lord gave me a dream that has stuck with me for years. This year actually, in 2022, I recommitted my life to Christ. And when I was fasting and praying for a week, he brought back this dream that he gave me when I was just a little kid. But he brought it back to me so clearly, I felt like I relived the dream. And I want to tell this to you guys because I do believe that he brought it back to my mind at this specific time because of the days that we are in and I do believe this is a warning dream that I need to be sharing with you guys and he confirmed this dream to me in a couple crazy ways that I will be sharing with you as well. Okay so my dream starts out standing on a big round bridge that looked similar to the half round stone bridges that you see in Europe over canals. The bridge was standing over a huge body of raging flames which looked like lava. The left side of the bridge was full of people and you could just tell that they were full of the darkness and they were on the weaker side of the bridge, and they were all greatly fearful because they knew that they were about to be consumed by this fire. But on the right side of the bridge stood the whole family of Christ, and there was a stark contrast between the two groups, and you could tell that the right side was full of light and goodness. And I was standing on the right side of the bridge with my family and all of those who loved Jesus. The right side of the bridge that we stood on was a firm foundation, and it was much stronger and wider side of the bridge. We stood on this bridge, and the two groups of people were facing each other, but there was a separation between them in the middle. The people from the left side were not able to cross over to the safer right side, and neither could the people on the right side cross over to the left. We all stood there scared for our lives as we were on this huge bridge over the lava. Then suddenly, half of the bridge broke off and fell into the fiery pit of flames. And immediately, all of the people who were standing on the left side of the bridge were consumed by the fire. The people on the right side of the bridge, however, stayed sustained. And miraculously, the bridge did not fall into the fiery pit below. So like literally half of the bridge was broken off and half of the bridge was just still holding itself there. The right side of the bridge was still standing in a way that seemed almost impossible if it weren't for God holding us up there. Then I remember as we saw half of the bridge get consumed into the fire, immediately my grandpa just started rejoicing and exclaiming, everyone look up to the sky, it's Jesus. We all looked up because the, the clouds were very dark and ominous before this, but we all looked up to the sky the clouds started to open up and bright beams of light were shining down through the clouds on us and we could see the most beautiful place up in the sky. In that moment, we knew we were going to be raised up to be with the Lord in heaven and I saw what I believe were the gates of heaven. Then I was still dreaming, but I woke up in my dream and I was still actually dreaming, but when I woke up, I ran to my parents' bedroom and I woke them up and I immediately told them about the dream. Then after this, after telling my parents about the dream in the dream, I immediately woke up in real life and went and told my parents. They still remember me telling them about this dream. It was a really surreal dream and it probably kind of freaked my parents out to hear their little kid <laughs> telling them about this, this dream of the tribulation, but it was something that has stuck with me for life. The Lord confirmed this dream to me on the same day that I wrote it down in two ways that really blew my mind. And that's really why I felt like I need to share this dream because he really had brought this to me in a serious way. So the first way that the Lord confirmed this dream to me was I was actually on the same day that I wrote down this dream at 6.30 p.m. I was being rushed to the hospital because I was throwing up blood and I was throwing up a lot of blood because I literally thought I was dying and I, I was getting ready to go meet my father in heaven and I was really sad to think about all the opportunities I had had on earth but I didn't witness to people. I remember it just being like a really dark rainy day but then as me and my brother as soon as we got onto the freeway in the dark clouds is literally like what I saw in my dream as a kid. The most glorious beams of bright light just shining through the dark clouds. I said to my brother, that literally looks like what I just wrote down and what I described today when I wrote down my dream. I knew that it was the Lord who put that sunset in the sky to encourage me and to show me that I was on the right path. As I sat in the hospital waiting room, I called my dad to say my final goodbyes to him because he was actually on a photography trip. And then 
he says, I'm going to send you a picture of where I was today. As soon as my dad sent me the first picture of the location that he was at, I knew it looked exactly like the bridge that I saw in my dream that the Lord gave me as a child. And this blew my mind. Even the rocks below it resembled the red burning lava that was about to consume us. This was actually delicate arch at Arches National Park. And I have never seen this in my life until this same day that I wrote down this dream. The, uh, and I saw the picture of the half round bridge, uh, delicate arch. It all made sense. So this is what my dad sent me a picture of. As soon as I saw this, I knew it was exactly what I saw in my dream. Except in my dream, this was a lot bigger because there was a lot of people on it. But it looked just like this arch. The left side of this arch is deteriorating, it has a weak link on it. And as you could tell, the right side of the bridge is firm and steady and it has a big foundation. And even if the left side were to be knocked down and fall and break and crumble, the right side would still be sustained. It all made sense to me after I saw this. The right side of the bridge, just as it was in my dream as a child that we were standing on, that's because we are seated at the right hand of God. The right side was strong and stable and could easily sustain us and hold us over the lava without crumbling and being devoured into the burning pit and scary death. The left side was full of all the people who despised the Lord and chose to do evil and be full of the darkness. The left side of the bridge was the weak link of the whole bridge. The left side of the bridge literally had a weak link and you could tell it was near a crumble if anything were to strike at it. It wouldn't stand a chance of withholding and it wouldn't stand firm and it would be devoured into the flames. We we were all about to crumble into the lava because we were all on the same bridge. However, I knew that God was going to save us and it just didn't feel like a nightmare. I remember it just didn't feel like a bad dream. We were so happy to be on the right side, but we were also afraid of being over the fire. But we chose to trust God, even though the circumstances looked scary. Now to get into some interpretation of the dream. And I'm going to read you guys the verses that I found that correlate with this. Luke 16, 26 says, and besides all this, between us and you, there is a great chasm fixed, so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able, and that none may cross over from there to us. And that's literally what happened in my dream. They were on the, the darkness was on the left side. They couldn't cross over to the right safe side. At that point, it was too late. And on the right side, you couldn't cross over to the left either. You couldn't go over and try to help those people, it was too late. I felt like this was a warning message. Even though I did not feel fearful in the dream, I do believe this is a dream for those who do not know the Lord yet. You gotta get on the right side of the bridge before it's too late. And I really do believe that that is the message that the Lord wants me to tell you through this dream. We are all going to be faced with this bridge. We are all going to be on this bridge. And if you're not on the right side of the bridge, you're gonna be on the left side. Get on the right side before it's too late. The Lord is patient and merciful and he's giving us more time, but I do know that his judgment is coming soon and he's going to pour out his wrath on this earth. And I do believe that those days are coming sooner than most people think. Matthew 25, 41 says, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's literally what I saw. I saw all the people from the left get devoured into the eternal fire. It was like literally the lake of fire is what I think I saw in that dream. Psalm 21 9 says, you will make them as a blazing oven when you appear. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and the fire will consume them. And that is literally what happened in my dream. The Lord says there's only one way to the Father. You can only get to heaven through Jesus. You need Jesus. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of a trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. I was on that bridge and I saw the clouds open and I just knew in that moment that we were going to be lifted up to go be with the Father in heaven. Ezekiel 2230 says, I searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found no one. I just thought of that one because there was a gap in between these two groups of people on this bridge. Psalm 3720 says, 
But the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish. Like smoke, they vanish away. And that's literally what happened. Everyone vanished. Everyone who was standing on that left side of the bridge, you guys, literally vanished. They got devoured into the flames within seconds. It was like literally that whole side of the bridge holding them just crumbled and they were just devoured within seconds. Like smoke, they vanished away. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. And that's what we were all doing. We, on the right side, we were all unified. It was a big family that were all just unified in the body of Christ. But it was really sad to see all many people that were still on the left side. Revelations 20, 14 says, Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. Okay, and I believe that what I saw in that dream was the lake of fire because we were all standing on this big bridge above this huge like it was like a big body of raging lava and flames it was like a big river slash lake and it was just fire yeah it's really like frightening thing to see i don't want to see anyone thrown into the lake of fire except the devil <laughs> and get thrown into the lake of fire every day <laughs> first john 1 12 says but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And so we were all standing on the right side of the bridge. We were all God's children. We had all committed our lives to him. Proverbs eleven twelve says, Be assured, an evil person will not go unpunished, but the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. That's literally what happened. It was all the evil people and they all, they all got punished. They all got thrown into the fire, but the righteous were delivered. Psalm 106, 23 says, Therefore he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. And that's literally what it was. Like no one was standing in between the breach. There was no one left to stand in that gap between the, the righteous and the unrighteous. It was the final day. And the Lord keeps referring to this gap in the breach in the bible and i really believe that's what what i saw i really hope that the, the lord is calling some modern day moseses we need some modern day abrahams we need some modern day josephs to step up on the scene and stand in the breach <laughs> the signs and the way that the world's coming the lord is coming soon you guys but i'm praying that he will delay that and give us some more time but also if he raptures us tomorrow <laughs> that would be amazing <laughs> but i do want to do what the Lord is calling me to do while I'm here on this earth. Revelation 20.10 says, And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's what I saw. Revelation 21.8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. That is a serious verse, you guys. Every word the Lord says is true. If you want to accept Christ Jesus into your heart, pray this prayer with me, and he will come into your heart, and you will be a new creation in Christ Jesus, and he will take away all of your darkness, all of your past, all of your mistakes, and he will wash you clean in the blood of Jesus. We need to be all in for the Lord. The Lord doesn't want people who are lukewarm. He says, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. You need to be either hot or cold. Pray this prayer with me if you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart today. Dear Lord Jesus, Today, I enter into a new relationship with you for the rest of my life. Lord, I accept you into my heart. I believe that you died on the cross to forgive me and die for my sins. And I admit that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Lord Jesus, I need you. Please just flood me with your Holy Spirit today. Fill me with you, Lord Jesus. I want to know you. I want to serve you. I want you to be in my heart from this day forward. Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for accepting me, and thank you that I am a new creation in you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. That is the best prayer you'll ever pray, guys. You are now in the body of Christ for eternity, and now you know where you're going. It's not going to be easy. The devil is going to be trying to come for you, but ground yourself in truth. Wear the whole armor of God. And never take it off. The Lord has come into your heart and the Holy Spirit now lives in you. This is 
something to rejoice about. The power of God is now in you once you accept Christ Jesus into your heart. I believe that he's showing me that I need to be focusing on harvesting and getting people onto the right side of the bridge before it's too late. I don't want to see my friends. I don't want to see my family. I don't want to see people I love on that left side of the bridge get consumed into the fire. I want to be one big family in Christ and just experience eternal love. I love you guys. Bye.